Amen. We just thank God for uh, for this day. And of course, because of that, we will rejoice and be glad in it uh, just because of what he has done for us. But he woke us up this morning, didn't he do it? Yes, And he started us on our way, gave us the activity of our limbs. Amen. Amen. We ought to rejoice in in him. Praise the Lord. Thank God for my wife, uh, Tina. God bless you. uh, Deacons, Deacon Bob, God bless you. Deacon Van in his absence. Uh, Mother Mother Van in her absence. uh, All the trustees. Amen. And last but not least, amen, our own evangelist, amen, Sylvia Laird. God bless you, my sister. Amen. We just thank God for each and every one of you who are here in the house of the Lord, amen, today. Today we're going to be taking a look in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 61, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 3. Uh, Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. Our children had sang a song early when they got up and they said joy to the world. I'd simply like to use that title joy to the world uh, regarding these passages of scripture. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. I'm open up in prayer and then we'll get right into God's word on today. Dear God, we just thank you God for uh, another opportunity to stand before your people. We ask, oh God, that you may just have your way. God, we thank you for your very presence right now. Uh, your Bible, your word says, uh, where two or three are gathered in your name, there you would be in the midst. So, God, we thank you for being right here today. Amen. And we just thank you, God, for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you have already done. And we thank you for what you are doing. Uh, God, we love you. And we do thank you, God, because you have been so good to us. You brought us to this very present moment, God, through all the years, through all the aches and pains, through all the good times, through all the bad times. You brought us to this very point today, God to give you glory. So God, we just thank you, God, once again for the opportunity of God to give you glory. God, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. And here in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 61, kind of started the month off with Isaiah here and began to look at um, Isaiah when uh, we had made mention that a child is born uh, uh, um, there early in Isaiah. And of course, we know that we're talking about uh, Jesus, Jesus Himself. Yeah. Uh, we start out with Isaiah nine and and six and seven. It says, "For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government uh, and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David." and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That was Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. We had talked about that, but we were talking about, in that particular case, we're talking about hope, uh, hope, because we're saying that our hope is in Jesus Christ. And because of that, Christ is is going to be born, so we had to hope. The people there during that time had hope. You, all, through all the things that they were going through, they still had hope because of what was going to transpire. We talked about that because of this is the time of Advent. And we had said that Advent is a season of preparation uh, to prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, so even before John the Baptist came along, even beforehand, the prophets came along uh, speaking the word prophesying uh, what will be. Uh, so it was all preparation up until Amen. Jesus himself was was born. Well, there is also peace. We know that Jesus Christ, he is the prince of peace. Uh, so but not only in the season of Advent, there's the hope and peace, but there is also joy. Uh, so today we would like to talk about joy and uh, I would like to talk about joy to the world because we know when Jesus is born, uh, we sing the song joy to the world. Why? Well, we're going to see that because of Jesus him, himself. Uh, but it had to have been prophesied beforehand, and that's what we're taking a look at on, uh, not only done previously, but also on today on the uh, coming of the Lord. So once again, each year we await the rebirth of Christ when the when uh, the world will reckon, be reconciled with God, the Anointed One, uh, a Messiah, uh, will bring peace, justice, and righteousness to the world. So once again, we're looking at joy on today. Let's look at uh, verses 1 through 3 in our text for today. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. And here's how it says. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord 
hath anointed me to preach the good news, or the good tidings, rather, unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim and uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, yes. the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Amen. May the Lord have blessed the reading here as endures of his holy word. As we can see, as we started out reading in verse number one of, of, of uh, Isaiah 61, we saw that there was a likeness uh, or a reference that was um, made uh, to the Old Testament here in the New Testament in the book of Luke, uh, chapter number four, verse 18 and 19. And I'm going to read that for us. And we will see that that as Jesus began to speak, he began to speak of just what the Old Testament talked about. And that, of course, uh, was his mission. Uh, once again, there's Luke chapter number chapter number four, verse 18 and 19. And I will read that for our hearing. It says this right here in verse number 18 in Luke chapter four. And first of all, at this time, Jesus ministry was coming forth and he had gone into this particular um, just read. And he and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up in this verse 16. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Y'all remember this. And yeah. there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Yeah. And when he had opened the book, take a listen to this. Mm -hmm. He found the place where it is written. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Notice it's all caps because, and it's all, of course, read because Jesus, Jesus is uh, speaking, but all caps is referencing the Old Testament. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me uh, to pray. Now, the purpose of the spirit of the Lord or the uh, spirit of the Lord being upon him was to, um, was he anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. You cannot do that unless the spirit of the Lord is upon it. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Once again, you can't do that until to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised uh, or oppressed. And verse number 19 says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. See, all that Jesus was talking about, he was bringing it all the way back here to Isaiah chapter 61, uh, where it talks about him. Mm -hmm. And that's the passage where he went into the temple, uh, into the, into the uh, synagogue, and, he, and they gave him the book of Isaiah, because that was the book that was given to him. And he found that particular passage here in Isaiah, and it's, uh, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's telling all these people in the congregation right here. And uh, they're probably looking like, wow, you know, he's talking about a prophecy that was being told, foretold about him. And then they're probably like looking at him like, who does he think he is? And then he says, the spirit of the Lord is, uh, of, the, of the Lord God is upon me because and purpose the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek or the poor. It says uh, here in, um, in this talks about take, take a look. when we have been filled by the spirit of God, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there's a purpose for it, mission for it. And of course, that mission was, ta was taught to us in Matthew, where we are to go out and tell others. There's one song, go tell it on the, on the mountains, right, you know, uh, and everything. Uh, tell What's it? Uh, here and everywhere? I believe that's what it said, right? You know, <laughs> what's that again? over the hills and everywhere about Jesus. And that's what it is about Jesus. And then he says, yeah, that's why we are anointed to be able to do that, to preach or to proclaim the good tidings unto, unto the meek and um, or the poor. And he has sent me to bind up, okay, or to heal the broken hearted. And we all know what broken the heart in there. And no doubt during this time, the broken heart are those who have been who have been separated from God. Mm -hmm. And we're broken hearted not only just from relationships, but imagine from God himself. Man. It 
says to proclaim liberty mm -hmm. to the captives. And liberty is another word for what? Freedom. Uh, to, uh, to the captives. Mm -hmm. And the opening of prison to them that are bound. Now, as the Spirit of God has come upon him, amen, he had given those people hope. Not only did they have hope, not only did they have peace because of him, and now they have joy because they know the one that is coming or the one that has come will give us just what, just what we need. We need to have the joy. And here we talk about joy to the world. We have joy, amen, because of Jesus Christ. It goes on in verse number two, he says, not only do we, uh, does it do, but to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So yes, he's preaching to the poor. Uh, he has uh, bound up the brokenhearted or healed those the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to those that are that are captives mm -hmm. and the opening of prison to them that are bound because we need and want to be free in the situation sometimes that we find ourselves in and we can only have that liberty or that freedom in Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. That means that there is freedom. Amen. There. Here we go on and it talks about in verse number two to proclaim the acceptable year uh, of the Lord. Uh, we've got to go in and tell it. we got to go and tell the the good news. We got to go and tell about Jesus Christ. Yes, this is the Old Testament. Uh, this is right here is prophecy to what a man is to come. And what we are to do is to go and tell it, proclaim it. Now, once again, we talked about that before. Preaching, preaching, preaching. We, preaching almost gives people like a, a, a fear or or something to the effect of, uh, you know, I don't want to do that or anything. But guess what? When you talk about Jesus Christ, no matter what you're doing in your testimony, whether it's out there talking in conversation with somebody, sharing with them what God has done, what you're doing, you are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, you can't do that without the spirit telling you or giving you the power to be able to do that. You're not doing that on your own. If we're doing anything on our own, trust me, it will not be talking about Jesus Christ. But when the spirit of God, amen, is a showing us and directing us and guiding us, amen, we're doing just what the prophecy, amen, is saying that is going to, to happen. See that? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. But not only that, but it goes on and says, and the day of vengeance of our God. Imagine those that were in captivity. Those that were taken away from their homeland of Jerusalem or Judah and gone off to Babylon. Uh, imagine them receiving this prophecy from Isaiah and saying that not only is, is, uh, is this going to happen as far as uh, this, this proclaiming or preaching the good, good tidings to the poor and, and all this all this sounds real good to them and they're getting excited. They, they have this hope and now they're uh, where you know, when, you, when someone starts talking good to you all, y'all know what happened? We start getting a little bit excited and have some joy, mm -hmm. you know. You start smiling and, and everything just start getting good, uh, good to you. And that's what happens when we begin to talk about, about Jesus and what he, what he has done, what he is doing, and what he is going to do. Don't you love prophecy? And especially when it's good prophecy, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to hear no, 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 you know, no, 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 uh, doom or anything like that, you know, gloom and doom. I want to hear some good prophecy. Tickle my ears. You know, then we all get excited and everything. But the word of the God will come forth. He says, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. They're taken to captivity. As they're taken to captivity because of, of their disobedience to God, God does not forget about them and he will not and does not forget about them. Uh, it goes on and says that in verse number three, look at three. To appoint, he goes on, or console unto them that mourn in Zion. Uh, Zion, was, of course, was given to the place where God's people are. It says to give unto them beauty for ashes. What did a beautiful song by Manuzi, I think that's what her name was, years ago she had come up with this song, Beauty for Ashes. Beautiful song. Uh, but here it says, I will say, give to the give unto them beauty for 
ashes. Now, in regards to ashes, when people mourn during that day, they would cover themselves with sackcloth and ashes. Sackcloth is that real rough type of material. And of course, sometimes, you know, we have this word you know, called croaker sacks or another one would be those um, burlap. Yeah, you know, and it's rough and everything. And, and uh, they would, they would ha put that on and also cover themselves with ashes. I mean, actually ashes. So all that was mourning. But here's what God says here in, uh, through, through Isaiah, the prophet, in verse number three, to give or to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them, just like we mourn sometimes for whatever issues that we're going through in life, we mourn, we mourn from all the crime that's going, oh my God, every time we think about Memphis or the surrounding area, we think about crime. Yes, it makes us mourn. We, we hear about someone got killed, we think about, well, Lord, pray we don't know that person. Children are being killed, shot. All these different things are going on. And it's like, police chief, can't you do anything? It's like saying, you know, uh, you know, uh, telling someone else uh, that really, uh, what, I mean, what can a police chief do? The, the whole problem starts at home once again. We said that before. So it's, it's no secret. It starts at home because we're talking about young people doing these things. And so... We think of the crime and all the other, I can't go over here. If I go over here, I got to make sure I'm, I'm away from there or I'm, I'm back home by nighttime. And, and uh, we're limited to, the thing, limited to the things in which we desire to do, want to do, and, and everything because of crime, because of everything. We I kind of feel like we're, we're, we're in captivity ourselves and we're supposed to be free. But we also say, hey, I'm a child of God. I have no fear. Uh, but then logic sets in, saying, I better get home. Uh, so he says, I point unto them that mourn. He's talking to us in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. Basically saying, stop the mourning. So when we stop mourning, what do we do? We get glad about it. What are we getting glad about? What are we having joy about? Well, first of all, we know that Christmas is coming, so therefore we know that Jesus is going to be born, so we're excited. We're, we're excited. Not Santa Claus coming or anything like that, but Jesus is being born. It's all about Jesus. He's the reason for the season. We're excited about this. We're, 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 we're really ready and everything so we can share gifts and share stories and share with, with one another. But more so, it's about giving praise unto God. Because God is giving us beauty for ashes. He's saying that come up out of the ashes. We have been down too long. Get up. It, don't you know that when God has given you the power, the strength, the authority to do something, he expects us to do it? Do we expect a hand to come appear out of heaven and to grab us and to pick us up? He has given us what we need and he expects us to get up and do what we're supposed to do to give him the praise. And part of that is not hiding uh, from the uh, from the situation, from reality It's to get up and be who he has called us to be. We are called peacemakers. Look, he says to give unto them beauty for ashes. We're to show the world that no, we're not mourning because of all the killing. We're not mourning because of all these things. We're mourning because of the fact that we're not doing what we should be doing. Parents are not doing what they should be doing to their children. Once again, I said before, we used to have a thing that come on the news 10 o'clock every night. He said, what? Parents, do you know where your children are? Well, they took it off for sure because sure enough, no, the parents don't. The majority of the parents probably do and majority maybe don't. But the kids are out there. So therefore, we're mourning because of that. Because the parents are not doing what they should be doing. To give unto them beauty for ashes. He's saying, get up out of that. The oil for joy. For mourning. And he's telling us that he will just supply us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
And that's what and that's what he's talking about. He's saying, look, we've been in that rut for long enough. Telling us to get up. Take the blanket off of us. Let's walk into reality. Let's tell this world who we are in Christ. Let's let them see the light of Jesus Christ. So they can be able to pull the scales from their eyes and be able to see. But he says to appoint unto them the, the more, uh, the, that, that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil, for, oil of joy, oil of joy. So we are to have some joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yes, we even have that. All that just uh, compiles on top of the other. But he's telling us, just take it off, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, mm -hmm. that he might be glorified. How can we glorify him while we're mourning? He's saying basically, shake it off. During Christmas, during this time, we sing joy to the world. That's our title once again, joy to the world. If I'm all in mourning and and scared to do this and afraid to do that and, and can't do this and can't do that. And then I'm going to come to church and sing joy to the world. Uh, that really is not going to work for us. So we have to, according to the word, have the mind of Christ. If we have the mind of Christ, then we will do what God has said. Shake that off of us. That spirit of mourning. Shake it off of us. Knock it off. Put on the oil of joy. Allow the oil of joy just to run down from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. Put on a garment of praise. Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I would give my testimonies unto the masses. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. Praise the Lord. I would have the instruments going. Praise the Lord. And everything that have breath, praise the the Lord, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness. Now, we're saints of God, so we have to get up. We have to show them who we are in Christ. Does it hurt what we're going through? Yes, it hurts. But even in that hurt, we can show them the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And outside of that, we have none at, at all. But he says that, so we may call the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And that's how he will be glorified uh, through, uh, through us if we, if we do that. Here, in Isaiah 6 and 3, we're talked about the beauty for ashes. A beautiful picture of what Christ can do for the mourning people of Israel and the ones hurting today. When we examine this verse, we learn that Christ is the joy giver. Nobody else can give us the joy. We, it'd be temporary. But he is the joy giver. He gives a joy that extends, extends beyond the surface. And our joy, sometimes we smile and everything. All look like you, you, you have this joy, you're happy and everything. But it's that surface. Christ releases us from the bondage that sorrows brings. He releases us from that. And joy is basically rejoicing and gladness and cheerfulness. That's just joy. But here Isaiah writes, it says, beauty for ashes because in the take, take, take this, this is interesting. In the Hebrew, once again, because when, we, when we're reading all in the Old Testament and stuff, we know that's right in Hebrew, and, and we really don't understand the Hebrew, so it broke it down to us in English. But sometimes we still got to take a look and see beauty for ashes. Because he's talking about beauty for ashes and garments of praise, oil of joy. So let's see what he's talking about. The Hebrew language, it says this, it's interesting, that cannot be translated into English because they use, so therefore use beauty for ashes. 
So the Hebrew word for beauty used here refers to, take a listen to this, y'all. This is interesting. A headdress. Headdress? A turban or a, anybody heard of a tiara? Something that we put on our head. So, so they're basically beauty for ashes. So we can see that that is a headdress or a turban, something that would cover. So God is saying that he is going to wipe out the ashes upon your head and replace it with a beautiful headdress. My God, my God. No more ashes all on your head because of the mourning. But he's going to replace, replace it with a beautiful headdress. Ladies, when you all go to the mirror and begin to hook yourself up, don't y'all begin to feel good about yourself? Yes. yes. Huh? Amen. Now, y'all know y'all feel good anyways before you do all that stuff, right? You know? But uh, but then begin to have that, that little bit of joy and say, okay, now, I'm, this is right here. I'm straight now. I'm good to go. Uh, but we know that anyways, you are already beautiful. You already have the headdress that God has for you, the beauty for, for ashes because of who you are. But outside of that, Isaiah says that, that, that we will be anointed with oil. And this is a common practice at that time, of course, as far as the anointing of oil during festivities, during times of joy, joy of joyful moments, is uh, this, this oil anointing. And so therefore it goes on and there's so a God is also going to clothe his people with a garment of praise. And, and, and this is interesting because it says that it's speaking about a garment that would be dyed in bright colors. Y'all have y'all seen bright colors and stuff like that? Bright colors and everything? Yes, just bright colors everywhere. And uh, and so in that in bright colors just makes you happy, makes you, you know, smile, and it just brings out a whole lot. Look at the rainbow. Rainbow don't have no dark. Rainbow got dark colors. No, you know, rainbow, it's just like rainbow, you know? Uh, all bright and everything. Uh, so it goes on and says, so then Isaiah began to speak of the trees of righteousness. And take this, this is interesting because of the fact that, that remember when Jesus healed this blind man? Uh, he, had to, he, he, had to, he had to touch him twice. Remember the first time he touched him, right? You know, uh, uh, and, then, and then the man said, uh, I can see men as trees. And then here, look at this right here. It says, uh, Tree, he speaks of trees of righteousness. Trees represent people. <laughs> that was interesting how the man see people as trees. Uh, trees represent people, and the mighty oak of righteousness shows us that, that in Christ we are strong. And we know that because it's not us, but it's the Christ that is in us. The only way that we can go forward is because of Jesus Christ. So we know because of, 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 of the Israelites when they were always in battle and everything and then they were taken into, into captivity here and there and, and then they would cry out to God, God would rescue them and then they would go and get in trouble again. And, and kind of like some people when they go to jail and stuff, you know, they call home and then they, we get them out and guess what happens again? They go right back. You know, and then they, they, they apologize, cry, and get them out and go right back sometimes. Not everybody, but recidivism seems to be part of life for some people. But here, it seems like Israel was recidivism, uh, was, was just simply prone to recidivism. <laughs> they kept on uh, getting out, got rescued, them, and then they go right back on in, into there. But here, but yet, just like us sometimes, here's what happens. God turns around and rescues them time after time because, because of who, who they are. And it's the same thing with us. When we mess up, we, amen, we turn around and we go to God and we cry and everything. God go in, you know, once again, you know, and then it just is constant and everything. And that's why we thank God, amen, where Jesus came in and said, you know, the man asked, how long shall I, how, 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 how often shall I forgive somebody? Amen. Jesus said seven times. Oh, say again? Seven times 70, okay, <laughs> right. And so therefore, you know, it, it, it tells that we have to do that and God does that for us. And we thank God, amen, for, for forgiveness. And so, 
uh, just like the Israelite people, they had been in many battles. They ended up being captive. They went, they've gone captive to the enemy groups and stuff, to the Assyrians, to the Babylonians and everything. But Isaiah reminds the Jews that even though God will judge the people, he will also pour out his love and favor for them. Yes, he does. He pours out his love and his favor. And that's one thing about having the joy in the Lord. Amen. If we got joy in the Lord, then we're going to have joy, amen, to the world. Because we're going to tell, amen, men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're going to tell them what he has done for us. We're going to tell them that he kept us while we slept and while we slumbered. We're going to tell them that nobody broke in on us. Amen. God has kept us all through the night. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. He gave us the activity of our limbs. Amen. He put food on my table. He has shelter over my head. He gave me transportation. He kept me during the dangerous highways and byways. Amen. He allowed me to make it. Amen. Where God would have us to go. Amen. From point A to point B. God, amen, amen, gives us a destination. He is our destination. So we ask, we're going to tell the world that, yes, there is joy to the world. Not, amen, as the world may look at it, but the joy to the world is Jesus Christ. And we got to tell it. Over the hills and everywhere, amen, that Jesus Christ is born. They say he was born a whole long time ago. I said, no, because he was just born in me. That's when he was born. He was born in me. I accepted him now, amen. That's when he became alive to me. Yes. And I can tell the whole world and not ashamed about it. And so, yes, the message that, that we have, that we're going to go and tell it, is for all the people, the whole wide world, it's for them to prepare their hearts, prepare their minds, for the coming of the Savior, which is the true reason for this Christmas season, and that's Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. We let them know, amen, that we have tried him. We have found him to be all right, amen, because of who, because of who he is. Yes. Amen. We've got to have the joy of the Lord in us. Amen. One song says, joy, joy, joy. I don't know the rest of it, but, you know, that's the one song. <laughs> Another one is that, hey, look, I have a, a river of life flowing in me. Amen. Flowing out of me, rather. Uh, and uh, matter of fact, I'm going a, I'm to a try to take a song that says, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Open up prisoners' doors, set the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well. Within my soul, spring up, oh well, that made me whole. Spring up, oh well, that gives to me that life more abundantly. Amen. We all should have a river of life. We all should have the joy of the Lord, amen, in, in us. Because that's how we as Christians operate. It's yes. from the joy of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word of during this advent and of joy. Yes. You told us about hope and peace, now yes. joy. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you, God, that lastly is going to be the love that you're giving us, and that is Jesus Christ himself. Yes. So, God, we ask that you may show us how to express the joy that we have. The joy, God, that you gave, and because you gave it, nobody can take this joy away. Show us, God, how to separate or how to identify that outward joy, that surface joy, to that inner joy that we have, to give you the glory in all that we do. To share, God, your message of love to the whole wide world. And in so doing, God, show us how to have that joy 
deep down inside. Where it may be expressed in our language, in our expression, in our touch. God, we thank you, God, for, for who you are to us. Savior, Lord, Prince of Peace, Mighty Counselor. God, we just thank you, God, for, for who you are. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be part of you. To be in the family to be in the kingdom. So God, we thank you, God, for, for having your way in this place, showing us about the joy that we have in you because of you. We love you. We thank you. We do give you all the praise and all the glory because it's due you anyways, oh God. So, God, we ask that you may continue, God, to keep us as we go out and tell boys and girls, men and women, yes. about the joy that we have. Yes. And we'll be able to express joy yes. to the world. And thank you. Yes. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you.